Hi all, George Mont here, and in this video we are going to review indexing first in Excel, then I will show you a weird example of another kind of indexing that you may have seen, and we will get into Python's way of indexing after that. So I am here in a workbook. You will have access to this data, all the stuff that we're going through here, I will put in the notes for this video. We've got a couple of data sets here. One of them is one dimensional. And if you've ever used the index function in Excel, we will do that now. So indexing is picking some element in a set of data based on its position in that set. Now, if we have a one dimensional array here, which we do, I am going to select what I've got named as burrows. I will select the third item here. Now this argument says it should be the row number, but because this is a named range, we can just disregard that and it, it's just going to be the third element in that array. Close parentheses. We get the first, second, third item in the range. Makes sense to me. And now, Let's do this in two dimensions. So same idea here, except we're just going to need a second argument. Our array is going to be the named table here, NYC. Let's say I want the second row and the third column. Now try to imagine or pause this for a second and think about which value this will result in. I'll close this. Let's get started. And we see the second row, third column. So that makes sense to me. You may have done this before, and I think this is a good intro into Python, which you may not be as familiar with. And because of that, I am going to take a little detour here and go over to this GitHub data set. Now, I will have a link to this in the notes, but imagine you see this, okay, dataset.xlsx. That sounds pretty exciting to me. I'm going to download this and let's just say I was a little too hasty with downloading it and I end up uh, downloading it just a few too many times. Now, what's going on here? You're gonna see our first one is just called data set and that makes sense. Our second one is called data set one, data set two, so on and so forth. Now, this is kind of weird. If you think about this, we could almost imagine this as being data set zero. The second one is called data set one. This is really an example of uh, counting from zero. And this is called zero-based indexing. And this is pretty common in computing. Now, Excel uses one-based indexing, so we did count from one when we were using index. Python's going to use zero like this. Things like JavaScript, C, a lot of programming languages use zero-based indexing. Now, people can get pretty opinionated about indexing. We're not going to get into that. Uh, really, the upshot of this video is that you should be comfortable working within both paradigms. So let's go over to Python. We will go through indexing in one and two dimensions, and you'll see how zero-based indexing looks in there. OK, so I'm in a Jupyter notebook. If you want more of an introduction to Jupyter and Python and some of the concepts we'll be getting into, like lists and pandas and things like that. I will have a resource to a book that I've published on the topic. It will go into Python specifically with Excel users experience in mind, so I hope that's helpful. Uh, but for now, let's continue with indexing here. Now this is a list in Python. You'll see that we've got a few data points in here. This is basically our named range in Excel. I'm going to run this, and now let's try to index. Now in the Excel example, what we did was get the third element in the list here. So let's try to do that. Uh, you'll see that when we index lists in Python, we're gonna use the square bracket right next to the list name. So I'm gonna try to get the third element in here, and keyword being try to get, because that actually got us queens, which is the fourth. So what's happening here? Well, imagine again that Python counts from zero. So we need to think of the Bronx as zero, one, and then two, not three. So we're gonna index by the number two to actually get the position three. So let's try this again. And 
that worked. So pretty weird, right? It does take some getting used to. We're gonna do a two-dimensional example now. Now this will work pretty similarly, except we just need another argument and we're gonna use pandas. So if you're ever using a data set that has rows and columns in Python, pandas is probably going to be your way to go. I am going to get this started. And again, if you want more of a take on how pandas works, what's this import statement mean, how, what's going on with all this code, I would definitely suggest checking out uh, the book that I'll have linked. But let's just keep going here. This looks pretty familiar with what you might see in Excel in terms of a table, right? We've got the rows and columns. Now, interesting here, we actually see 0, 1, 2. This is a pandas index. Now, every data frame in pandas, and this is tables called a data frame, starts indexing at 0. So that's a nice way of remembering that we need to index starting from 0 in Python. Now, we need to do this by uh, row and column. This is Panda's way of indexing. We're gonna use this thing called iLock. We're gonna put this in brackets again. So I think in the Excel example, we did uh, this value. So this would be the second row and third column. Now we need to start counting from zero. So this is actually position one, and we can see that here. And then position two is going to be there. So let's try to run that and see what we get. That looks right to me, if a little awkward and so on it goes. So really everything you're going to see in Python is going to start counting at zero. Uh, pretty confusing, like I said, but you know, you'll know you get used to it. I showed you that example of file downloadings just to get your mind thinking in that direction, show you that it's really not a fluke. It's pretty common with computers. It's something that you've actually seen before. And I hope that this video helped. Please check out my other videos, like, comment, do all the things that video people tell you to do. And I've got links to any of the data sets, my book that gets into Python and so on and so forth. So check all that out. Thanks a ton for watching and I hope to see you again. Thank you, bye.